Because while I go through mood swings on a seasonal, daily, and even hourly basis, finding a presentation that matches their current disposition is critical to catching fish. Up next, Fish Head host John Thielen talks about how versatile lures like the new Lindy Wally Tucker can help you trigger strikes when other lures can't. That's a good walleye right there. Man, I'll tell you, walleye fishing, when it comes down to it, is probably my favorite species to fish for. But, but here's the thing, you know, walleyes can be probably the most finicky species there is when it comes to wintertime fishing. Light conditions can make such a huge difference or a cold front like we're in today. I mean, we're in a nasty cold front. It's cold out this morning, that's why we're we're in the in the hub house this morning. Or seasonal progressions or bait offerings. Oh boy, where are you? Ooh, look at this one. Oh wow. Look at that fish. <laughs> look at that walleye right there. What a great way to start the day. That's a that's a great fish right there. But I'll tell you what, if you work through a bunch of different things each and every day that you're on the ice, you can get to a point where you can figure out exactly what's going on with these fish because walleyes have more mood swings than any species out there. A fish like that one right there, he's going to bite one day and the next day he might be on the same exact spot. You might drop down the same exact bait and he might not bite it. So what you got to do is you got to work through that whole pile of progressions and get to that thing that triggers them on each and every given day because it could be different every day. But when you get it figured out, you can really kind of dial in what their mood swings are and you can catch fish pretty consistently. We'll let that one go. I think we're going to get plenty of them today, but what a great way to start right there. Get out of here, buddy. Here he comes hot. Got him. That one I got. Oh yeah, he feels like a pretty decent one too. I don't think he's a giant, but feels like a pretty decent fish. You're a good eater. If we we're gonna keep fish to eat today, that would be about the perfect size fish. That's probably a 15, 16 inch sauger. And skinny little bugger. We're not gonna keep any fish to eat today, but sure it's fun to catch him in between those better walleyes. Did he come up hot? This one should be a little bit better fish, I think. Just the way he came up. He looked and looked and looked, looked for a while, and then, and then finally came up here. I don't know, you know, they're they're all good. I hate to try to pick a, a size of a certain one. Look at that. That's even a better sauger than that last one right there. Think they like that Wally Talker? They're just coming up and nailing that thing time and time again. Let's get this guy out of here, and then let me show you the bait I'm using. Cause this is a brand new bait and I've seen a lot of baits come and go over the years and one of the things I'll tell you is there are certain things that walleyes like and when we built the Wally Talker at Lindy the idea was to really build a bait that was based upon what do walleyes like so the number one thing we did is we thought about the sound and when you look at this Wally Talker what we've done is it's got brass discs and it's got a brass weight in the center so that it'll turn and fall like a dying minnow it'll a dying minnow it'll always fall horizontal like that because of where we place that weight but here's Here's the thing we did. See all these little glass beads in here? They make this high pitched ticking sound and that makes a huge difference because that's a sound that walleyes really like whether it's in a crankbait or in an ice bait like this. They really like that high pitched sound. But the other thing that's really cool is when you look closely at these glass beads, you can almost see through them. It's like it's a crushed glass. And what that does is it really gives that holographic, that little bit of flash. It really looks like a real minnow. So it does everything. And, and then you got the red treble hook. So you make that 
little bit of high pitch sound. You give off that little flash with your with your different discs and the and the center weight. And then you've also got all this color that's added in there with these glass beads. And it comes in a whole variety of colors, a couple different sizes. It's one of the best walleye baits I've seen in a long time. And I mean, we're catching them today as fast as I can drop this thing back down. We're just putting a minnow head on it. You can fish it aggressive, you can fish it passive, you can fish it in a cold front, fish it in stable conditions, and you know what? It hasn't mattered where we fished it this year. We've been to Devil's Lake, we've been to Mille Lacs, we've been all over the countryside. Today we're up on Lake of the Woods. One, one location after another, this thing just flat out catches fish. fish just sitting there looking at it it's been it's been looking at it for quite a while I mean I'm to a point where I am barely moving that bait I mean you can see on my rod tip I am just barely moving it I mean it's probably just bouncing just a little bit I mean picture picture just like that little yo-yo effect but really in slow motion there he is he bit it just come up and nipped at it my god I mean you know when, when you hook a fish like this though he didn't come railing in so make sure you, you gotta make sure you stay tight on him because I'll tell you what, the way he nipped at it, I would speculate that I don't have him hooked real well. You know, when they just drill it, I usually feel like that's when you've got a deal where you reel up and that bait's all the way down his mouth. This fish here just kind of reached up and pecked at it. You know, he had looked at it quite a while and usually that's how they'll bite when they look at it as long as this guy did. Oh, I think he's stuck on the bottom. Of oh, there he came up. There, look at that. <laughs> look at that eye right there. That is another great fish. I'll tell you what, we are sitting in a cold front right now. And I think when it comes down to it, when we talk about mood swings that walleyes go through, I think cold fronts actually have more to do with mood swings that walleyes go through than any other thing. And that, that's just another great fish right there, man. I'll tell you all day long, I would love to sit and catch fish like that. And you can do it even in today's conditions. I mean, it is nasty this morning. We got up this morning, we looked outside, it was 14 below, and we knew we were going to snowmobile about 10 miles. Let's let this guy go, and we'll talk a little bit more about how we're catching these fish. Because here's the thing, there's a trick to it. And if you do it, you're going to be able to catch fish in these cold fronts. So let's let that guy go. All right, buddy. Get out of there. There he goes. Man, he was all set to get out of here. But I think about the first thing I hope, and there he popped back up a little bit on us. Get out of here, Chief. There he goes. I think the number one thing I do when I'm sitting in these cold front situations and these walleyes get in what I call a bad mood. When they're in a bad mood, they're just barely moving. And that fish right there, he was in a bad mood. He came in, he sat there, he looked at it. He really was not excited about hitting that bait. What he did is he just came in and looked and he just hovered there. Well, when they're doing that, I think a lot of times the best thing you can do is slow your presentation down. And that's what I did right there. I got to a point where I was almost just bouncing the rod tip. Now, I do think that I brought him in by working working the bait really, really aggressively. But here's the thing, he wasn't interested in hitting it that way or else he would have come in and just railed it. He was interested enough that I moved him and he came in slow, he didn't rush in. And that's, you know, that's a trait of a cold front. They're gonna move slow. They're not gonna be in a hurry to do anything. But once he got there, he just sat there looking at it. And it was funny because as I was just bouncing that Wally Talker above him, just like this, all of a sudden he just kind of nipped at it. There was not that big, huge boom, boom. It almost felt like a panfish hit. And that's what you'll get in these situations. But that's the number one thing I do is I really slow my cadences down. I really subtle everything out and I almost flatline everything. And the idea behind doing that is these fish aren't aggressive. Now, later today, they are going to get a little bit more aggressive, a little bit more, a little bit more as this cold front kind of becomes a little bit more history for them and things start stabilizing. But when you're in that cold front situation and they're in that bad mood, just slow things down. Just kind of barely move it, flatline everything once you see fish. And here's what will happen. A lot of times they'll come up and hit it just like that guy finally did.